the upwardly mobile-minded disciples asked Jesus, who is the greatest? Who's number one or number two or on your right or on your left? Who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he uses a child to make his point. And he says to them the words you just heard, unless you are becoming, indicating there's some kind of reverse transformation, unless you become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Children, interesting that Jesus would choose them, were regarded with no status in his time. They had no rights and they were considered property and not a model for anything. Thank God that our society is completely different in that aspect, even though we do have a problem with abusing and exploiting children, I might add, which is a, a horrible thing. Often people ask me, do I stand for this or stand for that? Well, the two things I do stand for is one, or against is exploiting, abusing children and animals. Um, Jesus took a child, however, without status, without rank, to present to them his understanding, his view of what it meant to be a spiritual sojourner, what it meant to be a Christian, what it meant to become, to be transformed in that sense. One must become like a child. One must become like Aubrey Renee, this beautiful girl that I held in my arms just a bit ago. If I am to grow spiritually, I'm going to grow to be like her and all these other wonderful children that have had the opportunity to hold in my arms and baptize and bless. So for me to go through this trans transformation, for me to become a child, what are those characteristics? What are those childlike attributes that denote my journey in my spiritual life? Number one, purity. That child is pure, innocent, without resentment, without callousness, has no bad habits, no overindulgence, only receives openly the gift of life that she's been given. For us to enter the kingdom of God, we could transfer this same word of purity in regards to that child and apply it to ourselves. Of course, the only thing we know is for sure that comes to mind is that adults, we are no longer pure. In fact, we probably would say we've been tainted and, and we are dirty in aspects of our life. So what we find ourselves doing is realizing that what has to happen is a regeneration, a new birth, that we become a child again, or as psychologists and psychiatrists would tell us or help us to do, to find our inner child is to find our healing, and to find our healing is to find our wholeness, and to find our wholeness is to find our way. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Secondly, to become a child means not, not only this innocence, return to purity, cleansing, forgiveness, beginning, but it means humility. Humility unpretentiousness, genuineness, being truly who one is without fronts, without masks, without roles, and without hypocrisy. One of the greatest stories that has always hung around my heart is the story of the skin horse and the velveteen rabbit, written by Marjorie Williams. The skin horse has been in the nursery longer than any of the other toys or animals. And one day in discussion, the velveteen rabbit asked the skin horse, what does it mean to be real? The skin horse says, real is what happens to you after a long time. It happens as you are loved and as your hair gets pulled off or your eye hangs out or there are uh, splotches in your fur. But these things don't matter at all because you're real. And when you're real, you can't be ugly except to those who do not understand. To be childlike, to be 
childlike in the Christian sense of the journey is to be real, authentic. That's what people are longing for today. The lack of it is what people are turned off with today. They want to see reality and genuineness without any fakery whatsoever. They want to know that we're real. Third, what does it mean to become like a child? It means to grow. This baby girl started growing the moment she was born. Time for her mother and daddy started moving at a swifter speed. This baby girl is growing every second of every day. In a year, in two years, we won't even know her compared to now because of this incredible pace of growth, this fruitfulness that is within our genetic makeup. To become a child in the sense of the kingdom of God is to be open, is to grow, is to continually be transforming, is to be always on the journey and the adventure and never to have arrived until we go to the other side. We're always in process. We are always growing. She's growing because she's eating and she's eating because she's hungry. There has to be a hunger inside that we wish and a thirst to fulfill in our own journey of transformation. Blessed are those, Jesus said, who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall grow, they shall be at peace, they shall be satisfied. To become a child, it means to trust. When I held that little girl, she is completely trusting me that I will hold her not hurt her, not drop her, but bless her. That child completely, 100% is a picture of faith and dependency upon her parents for nourishment, for guidance, for wisdom, for growth, for all the things in life, for shelter from the storm, to take care of her if she becomes sick. She trusts them completely. To become a child is to trust God as our Heavenly Father. Now, I know as we grow as adults, we become self-sufficient, we become strong, we become smart, we're educated, we have goals, work, and accomplishments, we save our money in the bank, and we build our house, and yet still it seems we have that need within, inside that child to trust so that we have peace and feel that our Father will always take care of us. Let go, let God, and let it be. We never outgrow that need in our life. And sometimes the greatest things in our life that need to happen, happen when we sincerely just stop and allow God and His universe and divine mind to help us. Trust. And then there's wonder. Life for a child is an explorium. The eyes wander all over the place, soaking in every color, every object, every person, everything, night and day. Every laugh, every word. Always in the journey, exploring, always wondering, discovering her toes or her parents or the hair on this one's head or this hand or exploring. And yet it seems we in our own life have repressed as adults. Sometimes adulthood is the repression or what comes with it is the repression of this wonder, of this journey, of this questioning, of this search, of this wanting to know. We've become tame. And maybe our prayer should rather be that in the words of the song, open my eyes that I can see. Life is a journey. And this last little thing about a child, nothing unifies a group of people more than a child. I can hold this child or your child in the middle of this sanctuary and everyone is captivated and everyone is mesmerized by that child. That child has the power to bring people different 
of all ages together. What it means to be as a child is to be one of peace and a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those children as they march with their palm leaves, for they shall be called, blessed are they, sons and daughters, children of God. As I consider this, it's no wonder to me now when I can think about the narrative of the Christmas story that of all the options God had in terms of how he sent Jesus, he could have sent him as a warrior, as someone in arms, or maybe he could have sent him as a CEO or a president of this or a leader of that. Maybe he could have sent him as a very schooled person, PhD. But no, when he chose to speak to the world in the supreme right moment, he decided to send a child in all of his wisdom, in all of his innocence, in all of his purity, in all of his innocence. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but basically be born again and rediscover the child within. Our problems as adults and in adulthood come because I think we've lost our child or our child inside is private self has been battered, damaged, to the point that we must rediscover, be reborn, and grow. It is that child that gives us strength and gives us hope and gives us courage. It is the Christ within the hope of glory. Father, be with us this day that we might discover the Christ within us this child in the nativity of our heart. That we might live, O oh Father, as those that are open and free, trusting and believing in you, our heavenly parent and creator. All this I pray in the name of Christ. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn.